So basically, the patient is asleep, intubated. We connect the patient's head to this Mayfield head holder. We connect that to the Rosas, to the robot. And then we also connect the head holder to the bed. The, we, take, we do a registration of the head so that Rosa knows where the head is at all times in three dimensions. And we confirm that registration by checking points on the, the face and the forehead and the head. And usually the accuracy is, is millimetric. If, if we're off at all, we're off by a millimeter. The last case we did, it looked like it was perfect. It was probably the best case we had done. Um, so then we wash the patient's head. We don't shave any hair or cut any hair. We wash the patient's head and forehead and around the ears. And we drape the patient with sterile drapes. And then we're basically ready to go. So we would, we would do what we call drive to the first electrode. Basically, we're driving to the first electrode trajectory. So we push this button. And uh, now, OK. So we basically push that button. Even, even Rosa, even the robot is draped in a sterile drape uh, during the surgery. And then after that, we can control it. But even when we control it, it is going to, uh, we're going to bring it into the skin and just stop at the skin. And then because we're doing everything through this rigid arm, this arm is now acting as what we call stereotaxy. Stereotaxy is a way of doing things in three dimensions and getting, and getting to a specific point in three dimensions. And Rose's arm is going to keep that trajectory for us. And again, that trajectory was something I made in the computer before the surgery to, to get to the target I wanted to get to and avoid any blood vessels. So once Rose's arm comes into the head and is holding that trajectory, we're basically using the arm and the tiny hole in the middle of the arm as like a, as like a barrel. And then we would take out the drill and we would screw in what we call an anchoring bolt. So we screw this anchoring bolt in and that, and that anchoring bolt is about two and a half centimeters long. And that's fixed. It gets what we call a strong purchase in the bone. It's fixed in the bone. It's very solid. And that becomes this, this stereotaxy device. So then we can take Rosa's arm back. And we take Rosa's arm back to a point where we start seeing the first threads on the anchoring bolt. I won't go into the details of that. But just to say that Rosa, Rosa, Rosa knows the distance from that point to the target on the trajectory that I've made. So now we have that, we have that distance. And we also know the distance of the, the length of the, the adapter of Rosa's arm. So we basically do a subtraction. We do a subtraction. Once we have that number, that subtraction, we get Rosa's arm out of the way. We still have the anchoring bolt, which again is the, now the stereotactic device. We, we have that number, that subtraction that we made, that calculation that we made. And we measure a stylet. So it's a, a relatively rigid but small, less than a millimeter, a rigid wire to the distance that Rosa gave us to the target. And then we pass the stylet into the brain. We're measuring anywhere from 10 to 15 points in the brain with a single electrode. And remember, we're putting in anywhere from 10 to 18 electrodes. So this is, so the way to think about this is EEG in three dimensions. So it's not just the surface of the brain, it's three dimensions through the brain. That's why it's called stereo EEG, EEG in three dimensions. So now we, we take the stylet out, we pass that electrode in with 10 to 15 contacts in it, and we screw that, it has a little cap on it, it can be screwed into the anchoring bolt. We screw it in, and then we're finished with the first electrode. So basically everything I said there, it probably took me about, I don't know, five, seven minutes to say that, maybe 10 minutes. But that's basically the process of putting a single electrode. The, certainly the, the work that goes into making the hypothesis about where the seizures start, deciding where to put the electrodes, actually building the, making the trajectories for the electrodes in the software certainly takes uh, more time, I would say double or triple the time that it actually takes to put the electrodes in. Mm -hmm. But by that point, by the time that we're ready to put the electrodes in, that we're here doing this, you know, we're quite confident that we've made good, safe trajectories for the patient. It takes a while for things to catch on. It takes a while for people to have data to show that this is safe. 
And now because it was used for many years, uh, mostly in Europe, um, there is a lot of data now to show that the complication risk of this procedure is, is very low, and it's actually lower than the other, the other subdural grid type procedure.